Well, hello out there, folks. Brother Craig, your friendly neighborhood hatchet man here. Uh, very, very quick little uh, video message here. Uh, we see what's going on in the country. Uh, cowards are, are, are running for the hills. Uh, very few people want to do a proper analysis uh, on what happened, but basically the coup was completed. And of course, it was an inside job. And this, uh, this nonsense of all these uh, so-called Republicans, I call them low-fat Republicans, people call them rhinos, you can call them whatever, uh, but I'm, a, I'm disappointed at a few, uh, most I'm not surprised by, a little bit disappointed, maybe a little bit surprised at, at Senator Ted Cruz, uh, but for the most part, this, this is how it goes, these people uh, we're happy to be with Trump when when Trump was um, giving the United States of America the best first term four years uh, in my lifetime. OK, and I'll be 60 this year. I've seen a, I've seen quite a few presidents come and go. And uh, and I've been paying attention since Reagan. All right. That's a lot of presidents and the most successful first four years. Uh, and, and, you know, and as far as all these Negroes that like to hate on Trump because the Democrat Party has nothing to sell them but hate. And in order for them to sell you hate, you have to be in the market to buy hate. OK, I can't sell you a house unless you're in the market to buy a house. All right. And so they, they have nothing to sell but hate. OK. And so just to take a brief moment to just say uh, just a few things that Trump has done. You know, and I hate to do the black white thing uh, because, you know, we as uh, Christian conservatives, we don't view the world through a black white lens. We view the world through a lens uh, like Ronald Reagan said, a rising tide lifts everyone's boat. OK, if you have a yacht, your boat, your yacht rises. If you have a rowboat, your rowboat rises. And so the focus is to bring the tide up. So everyone benefits equally. What size boat you bring to the harbor, that's up to you, okay? That's called freedom, and that's up to you, okay? So the unemployment numbers for black Americans, the business formations uh, for black Americans the last four years, the number of people that got off of food stamps and welfare and got a job, I mean, all these things through the roof. Black colleges and universities, uh, you know, getting a, a, a steady stream of government funding rather than have to go begging every year. All right. I just issue after year issue prison reform. OK, my good friend um, and he's a pastor too, Steve Parson. Great speaker. Great. I mean, great at explaining the Bible. He did a, a post of uh, 14 things that uh, Donald Trump promises made promises kept okay i mean just it's it's unheard of uh for the most part when politicians make promises they're just that they're just promises they don't even you know if they keep one or two fine but for the most part they know that it's just something that you say in order to get elected and here and this man actually kept his promises okay and and just to see the hate okay the hate. All right. Uh, so that's my first comment. I just think it's despicable that these pulpit pimp Negro preachers and these poverty pimp Negro politicians continue to have as much sway over the black population. They they literally are sheeple. OK. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I am sick of them. I'm sick of them. And I'm not just talking about the pimps. OK. The pulpit pimps and the poverty pimps. I'm talking about I am sick and tired. And in 2021, there is too much access to information for people to consistently be fooled by the same old thing. To be fooled by it, you, at, at, there's some level of you inside of you that likes it, that wants it, okay? It's like a woman whose husband beats her all the time. There's something wrong with that woman, okay? Because after he beat you one or two times, if you don't have enough sense to go get your your daddy, your brother, your uncle, a friend, the police, a, a social worker, somebody, okay, at some level, 
there is something not clicking right in her brain to continually defend him. Oh, he loves me. He's just frustrated. Okay. And so when you look at black America in the places where all of the problems are that these people, these, these Negro leaders have been whining and complaining about for my entire lifetime. Okay. In every area of their complaint, black Democrats are in charge. I mean, up and down the line, everywhere, okay? And to the extent that some of those problems got solved uh, in the last four years, you can thank Donald J. Trump, okay? Joe Biden calls these people super predators, and uh, he gives speeches, uh, oh, well, we think that the, uh, the, 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 the laws are not hard enough. We, we, they're not locked up long enough. I mean, he just... I mean, you can find easily find speeches of him saying this. Oh, we don't want, uh, you know, we don't want our children going to school in a racial jungle. OK, so if it's a racial jungle, who's the animal in that jungle, your child or his child? OK, he doesn't want his child going to school in a racial jungle. All right. And Donald Trump being a businessman, it's like, OK, my goal is to satisfy my customer and to get my customer to willingly part with his money, okay? And I don't care if Donald Trump is selling you, um, a, a, you know, an apartment in his high rise or if he's selling you a Donald Trump necktie, a Donald Trump bottle of wine, a ticket to a beauty pageant. I don't care what Donald Trump or any other businessman is selling you. Capitalism is predicated on the idea that I am going to convince you to willingly give me your money. Therefore, as of a necessity, he has to satisfy you. He has to, okay? And you don't get to be a billionaire unless you have a whole lot of satisfied customers. The man, like him or not, okay? And it boils my blood. And I hey, look, and I've got a lot to say about the preachers out here. It's not just the politicians, the preachers, okay? Franklin Graham, you're number one on my list, okay? I'll get to that in a minute. But let me just finish up here with, you know, this, 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 this unreasonable hatred, okay, that the Democrats have taught these Negroes when the worst problems, you know, black America doesn't have problems all over the whole 40 or 50 million black Americans. That's just a myth. Okay. The systemic problems are in the bottom 25%. Okay. And where these bottom 25% live, it's dominated by government. It's dominated where the, the mayor of these cities, a black Democrat. Okay. The police chief, black Democrat, the school board, black Democrat, the school superintendent, black Democrat. Okay. Up one end and down the other. Your congressperson, black Democrat. Okay. S not only black Democrat, semi-literate black Democrat. There's not one single semi-literate black Republican or, or no white Republican. Well, even the white Democrats can use the language. Okay. But the black Democrats, those Negroes are semi-literate, okay? Most of them can barely speak better than Al Sharpton, who was the most semi-literate person I've ever seen in media, all right? So this, 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 this nonsense of all of a sudden want to dump on Donald Trump, pull a coup off, and accuse Trump of trying to Mount a coup, mount a coup with a hundred uh, crazy people led around by the nose by a, an Antifa thug with horns on his head. I mean, really, really, this is serious commentary. And all we get from our so-called leadership in the Republican Party, all we, oh, I just denounce violence. Oh, it doesn't matter what side the violence comes from. I denounced the violence in the summertime when the Democrats were doing it. I denounced this violence. What these jackasses do is that they thereby give moral equivalency to cities being burned, statues torn down, 
property defaced and spray painted, police officers assassinated, hundreds of small minority owned businesses bankrupt. Okay, they're giving moral equivalency of all of that that happened all summer long. Okay, and we all saw it all summer long. And we also saw Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and all of the Democrats. No one ever condemned any of the violence. They actually encouraged the violence. You, you can see these people on video saying we need more of this. They encouraged it all summer long. They never denounced it. And so they set up a false flag operation to make it look like Trump people are committing violence a couple of days ago. And right on cue from Ted Cruz, I'm really shocked that Ted Cruz would fall for this. OK, but this just shows how selfish Ted Cruz really is. And in his heart of heart, but see, Ted Cruz was looking great when things were going great, but put some pressure on a man, you'll find out the man's character. And so the pressure was applied and he cracked. All right. Now you can like Donald Trump or you can not like Donald Trump. There's been pressure put on that man like no other president in my lifetime as a candidate, as when he was in transition and for four years when he became president right up to today, the man did not crack. He did not crack. Okay. He sold himself as a strong man. He governed as a strong man. He proved to us his strength. Okay. Now, is he as smooth as I would like him to have been? No. Okay. But no one's perfect. And I'm not going to dump on the man, you know, because when he's given a speech, you know, maybe he neglects to, you know, also give the warning to say, well, hey, guys, you know, Antifa is probably in this crowd. Don't don't follow behind Antifa. OK, don't follow behind Black Lives Matter. They pull that all summer long. There'd be a, a load of bricks strategically placed where someone had to pay for the bricks, order the bricks, have the bricks delivered. And all it would take is for two or three Antifa Black Lives Matter paid agitators to throw the first three or four bricks. The next thing you know, the Negroes are picking bricks up and they're, they're throwing bricks. Okay. And so this is just, this is shameful. This is shameful for all these Republicans to give moral equivalency to what happened, which was obviously a false flag operation where a staffer from inside the Capitol building opened the door, let them in. The police officers let the people through. When they first went in there, you would have thought it was a tour. They were just walking around. There was no opposition. The guy sitting at Nancy Pelosi's desk, you see the, the video or the photograph there are no police officers around him. How is this possible? This is only possible if there is inside help and that they got what they wanted. And why did they want it? They wanted it for this reason. And this is, and then I'm going to, I've got this and one other thing. Okay. So hang on with me. Maybe three or four more minutes in the video. For the first time, the merits of the vote theft were being discussed in a public governmental forum for the very first time, all right? No court would hear it. It got thrown out of every court so that the media can falsely claim Trump has lost in court. Trump is not lost in court. Trump is not won in court because no court would dare allow the evidence to be spoken because once the evidence is spoken, then in order for them to do what is in their heart to do, which is to deny Trump, they would have to go on the record. OK, and by not allowing it to be heard, they don't have to go on the record, but they accomplish the same thing. So. Now, so that's that's the, the reason it happened when it happened, because for the first time they're debating the issue. Uh, when A Arizona was the first state, they go in alphabetical order. So the first state with objections was Arizona and it was being debated at the time. And there were uh, maybe 13 or 14, maybe 15 senators 
along with uh, over a hundred congressmen who were objecting. And so when this when this trick got pulled, then these guys they run they run and hide like little Girl Scouts. Okay, debate over. First time it's being debated, the debate over. Greatest crime, greatest political crime in the history of humanity. The greatest, the largest, the most far reaching. Basically, China has taken over the United States of America with their paid president, Joe Biden. Okay. Unless you think Hunter Biden is so brilliant that he went and got that $1.5 billion from China on his own. No, he was the bag man collecting his daddy's money. Okay. And there's proof of that. So now my final point, you know, enough with these low fat Republicans. They make me sick. OK, now the next group that makes me sick is Reverend Chickenfoot. You preachers out there. The word of God says judgment begins in the house of the Lord. So that we're going to do a little judgment here for the next two or three minutes. OK, it sickened me that for four years. I had to listen to these so-called men of God. I'm a man of God. Men of God are first part of that phrase, men of God, men, man. You have to be a man in order to be a man of God. You can't be a punk and then call yourself a man of God, okay? You can't not have a brain and call yourself a man of God, okay? It just, it doesn't work that way. Men of God are men of discernment, okay? Now, for the general public that's out just minding their business, doing their job, tending to their families in tough and stressful times, or even in good times, okay? They can perhaps be excused from not being fully informed, okay? But we who are in leadership, and the word of God says, be careful when you seek leadership, okay? Because it says when you seek leadership, you will be judged by a higher standard, okay? And this is true. So no one put a gun to the heads of these low-fat Republicans and made them be a Republican. They could have been a Democrat, or they could have just went and done something else, all right? So they are fair game for my critique. Same thing with you preachers out there. No one put a gun to your head and made you say with your lips, I am a man of God. No one forced that on you. Of, of your own volition, you chose to go into the clergy. Now, whether you went into it for business reasons or you were really a born again believer in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's between you and God, all right? I will say that the book of John chapter 10, Jesus himself talks about the hireling versus the true son, okay? And this is what he says about the hireling. When the wolf comes to threaten the sheep, the hireling will run. How many people have you seen running now that things have gotten tough? They are hirelings. They don't care about the, the flock. The flock belongs to our heavenly father. But Jesus says, the true son whose father owns the sheep, he stands between the danger and the flock. He puts himself at risk, okay? Now, Ted Cruz can probably quote that from the Bible better than I can, but the joker didn't live it, did he? He did not live it, okay? And so... To you preachers out there like Franklin Graham and many, many, many others, okay? To you who I've had to listen to you always pre-qualify any comment about Donald Trump with, well, we know Trump is a sinner. Well, we know Brother Craig here. I'm a sinner, okay? If you want the sin line to line up outside, um, you know, down the highway, it'll be a million miles long. I'll fight you to be the first one in line as the number one sinner. So yes, Donald Trump is a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. The joker crying about Trump is a sinner. The news reporter telling lies on Trump is a sinner. The Republican running from Trump is a sinner. And the Democrat stealing the vote is a sinner. 
word of God says we're all sinners. And I have never, I have never heard these people, Franklin Graham, nor any of the others. I have, and we've had some presidents, and again, we're all sinners now. But we've had some presidents that are some real doozies, okay? And all I've ever heard them say in regards to these other presidents, whose policy endorsed sin and promotes sin, whereas Trump, the sinner, had policies to support a godly way of life. We're talking about policy, okay? Because Trump's personality doesn't affect my grandchildren in school. His, his, his personality does has no effect. It's the policy that has effect. All right? It's the policy that has in fact, uh, an effect. And so when we see the preachers of America constantly harp on nitpicking this man as though he's the only sinner, and they've never done that to any other president. They just say, well, we want to pray for President Obama. We want to pray for President Bush. We want to pray for President Clinton. We, 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 we just want, we want to pray for the president. That's all they ever had to say. We want to carry their little weak behind up into their prayer closet and pray, okay? They want to pray in the pulpit. They want to pray in the pews. And if you ask them, well, well, Reverend Chickenfoot, why don't you and the congregation come leave the pew, leave the pulpit, leave the prayer closet? That's fine and dandy. That's, you've done that, okay? Now let's come on out in the public square and take your Christian faith and let the rubber meet the road and let's see what you got. They got nothing. Oh, well, Brother Craig, well, we can't do that because why? Wow, that's political. And, you know, we can't be political. Weak weak. If you're going to critique Donald J. Trump and his sin, you should have been critiquing Obama and his sin. You should have been critiquing Bush's sin. You should have been critiquing Clinton's sin. And I've not heard one of these preachers talk about how Joe Biden is always sniffing on somebody's little girl. And you see the little girl recoiling and trying to get away from him. And you see this in video after video, in photograph after photograph. Silence from the pulpit. Silence. Silence from the self-righteous, arrogant Christians who like to look down their nose at Donald J. Trump. They look down their nose at him because he's an onion toter. He's a real man, and they're not real men. They're fake men. They're hiding behind Jesus. You need to be a real man to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. Jesus doesn't need any punks, okay? You want to be a punk, go be a Democrat, go be an atheist, okay? Go and just, you know, do your thing, all right? It's, this is just, this is an outrage, okay? And that's enough, I think I've said enough for today, but, you know, I'm going to do my Sunday sermon like I do every Sunday. And so you guys check it out. Please share this message and understand that this, this, this smear of all the Trump people, 200,000 peaceful people and, a, a, you know, a handful of folks led by Democrats, planned by Democrats, encouraged by Democrats and have the whole country in media leadership dump down on us like there's something wrong with us, okay? And like there's something wrong with Trump and to have him abandoned by many of the very people that he benefited, that is a travesty. And God in heaven is not pleased. And I'm telling you, there will be repercussions. And so, my focus going forward is going to be this, and this is the last thing I'm going to say. I'll expound on it more in my Sunday message uh, tomorrow. Like I give a Sunday message, or you can call it a sermon, whatever. I'd give one every Sunday, okay? It is this. What do the righteous do when they live in a country whose leadership 
is so evil, so evil that they're bringing upon that country the judgment of God Almighty. Because that's what's coming, folks. That's what's coming. I'm not going to sit here and say that I know what form it's going to take because I don't. I don't. Okay. All I'm saying is the righteous need to, we need to gird up our loins and be prepared. Okay. So if there are any weak spots or soft spots around you and those whom you love, I would sincerely encourage you to think about how you can tighten them up. OK, and how you can you know, if you have weaknesses and, and someone else has a strength, how you can get together with like minded people and exchange strengths for weaknesses. OK, and so this one over here, he might be good at uh, knowing how to use guns. This one over here might be good at knowing how to uh, harden your uh, communications. Uh, this one over here might be good at how to. Uh, save and prepare food, okay? This one over here might be good at how to get your child, how to show you how to get your child out of public school. And if you can't afford a private school, a, a, a quality Christian private school, because uh, you know all private schools are not equal, not even all Christian schools. Christians make me sick that are not true Christians. They make me sick, okay? Hiding behind the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. They make me sick, okay? But we have to be uh, people of discernment, and we have to be able to understand the difference, okay? So again, my question going forward is this. I'm going to repeat it. What do the righteous do of those who seek after God's righteousness. Remember this is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first. And then these other things will be added unto you. So we who seek after that righteousness, what do we do when the leadership of our country has gotten so evil to the point where they're bringing the judgment of God Almighty upon the nation. And with that, that's the final word for today, folks. And uh, I love you all out there and God bless you. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that the Lord would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and that the Lord would lift up upon you his countenance and that the Lord would give you peace. And that peace, folks, that would be the peace that surpasses all understanding. God bless you. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.